Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee for August 11th, 2022. I am Andrew Johnson, the chair of the committee, and at this time, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Payne. Present. Wansley. Vita. Present. Chugtai. Present. Koski. Present. Chair Johnson. Present. There are five members present. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum. With that, the agenda for today's meeting is before us. There are 11 items on the consent agenda, which I will read for the record. The first is setting a public hearing for September 29th to consider the assessment of sanitary sewer service availability charges. The second is setting a public hearing for September 29th to consider water and sewer service line repair assessments. The third is authorizing a grant application to the MPCA for an electric fire truck and charger. The fourth is authorizing a grant application to the USDOT for the 2022 Bridge Investment Program. The fifth item is authorizing a grant application to the USDOT for the 2022 Safe Streets for All Program. The sixth item is authorizing the submittal of an application to host a Green Corps uh, members for 2022 to the 2023 program year. The seventh item is authorizing a grant and cooperative agreement for the Dowling Avenue North Street Reconstruction Project as part of the public infrastructure for the Upper Harbor Terminal Project. The eighth item is authorizing a revenue only agreement with Hennepin County to reduce disparities in organic tipping fees collected through the Organics Recycling Program. The ninth item is authorizing certification of the application for the reissuance of the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System Phase 1 Permit. Amazing. Uh, the tenth item is concurring with the City Engineer's variance requests for Municipal Street Aid Standards for the reconstruction of First Avenue South. And the eleventh item is amending the Minneapolis Street Lighting Plan to reclassify four street segments as pedestrian street lighting corridors. I'm gonna see if there's any discussion or questions from my colleagues on any of those items or any that you would like to pull for discussion. Council Member Payne. Yeah, I just wanted to... Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to say I was really happy to see the uh, designation of 37th Avenue as a pedestrian uh, street lighting corridor that's getting a full redesign with uh, additional bike and pedestrian infrastructure and uh, it's just really great to see that work moving forward. Excellent. Thank you, Councilmember Payne. Any other comments or questions on this? Maybe I'll uh, just indulge for a moment on item number three uh, and ask Director, uh, Deputy Director Jelly to uh, maybe speak very briefly to this because I think it's a pretty exciting item and I didn't want the moment to uh, go past without at least a little more detail for the public on this. Thank you, Chair Johnson, uh, committee members, Brett Jelly, Deputy Director, Public Works. Uh, yes, uh, thanks for highlighting this item. This is something as we have been working to uh, electrify our city fleet and uh, consistent with the city's adopted green fleet policy, this was an opportunity where um, uh, something like an electric fire truck is quite a bit more expensive than uh, a standard pumper, and uh, this is the type of grant that will allow us to bridge that gap between um, the cost of those two vehicles and try something out. And I just want to thank our partners in the fire department who are very supportive of us moving forward with this. Thank you, Deputy Director. It's, it is very exciting, I mean, to see a large vehicle like this is, uh, is on the frontier of the technological development. And so it's pretty cool uh, to even be considered for something like this. So I will see if there are any other comments or questions from committee members. Not seeing any, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on all these consent items. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Wansley is absent. Ita. Aye. Chugtai. Aye. Koski. Aye. Chair Johnson. Aye. There are five ayes. The ayes have it, and the consent agenda is approved. Next, we will move on to our discussion item. It's a receive and filing of the Your City, Your Streets 2021 Progress 
report. I will turn to our Deputy Director Jelly to uh, see who will be presenting on this item today. Thank you, Chair Johnson, committee members. Bria Fast, an Associate Transportation Planner in Transportation Planning and Programming Division, will give the presentation. Excellent. Welcome, Ms. Fast. Thanks for the opportunity to present to you this afternoon. I am Bria Fast. I'm an Associate Transportation Planner in Public Works in the Transportation Planning and Programming Division. Today I'm going to be sharing the 2021 Your City, Your Streets Progress Report. In 2016, Council passed the 20-year Parks and Streets Funding Ordinance. Starting in 2017, this guaranteed minimum annual funding for city streets. In partnership with the ordinance was this 20-year street funding plan. The 20-year street funding plan process uses a combination of quantitative and qualitative considerations to help prioritize projects for the CIP. The quantitative analysis is data-driven. It looks at asset condition, community demographics, uses, and modes. The qualitative screening considers city plan and policy networks, city priorities and goals, and other factors that help determine priorities for our CIP. The ordinance also calls for an annual report back, which is what I am sharing with you today. Um, I do want to note that this presentation is not comprehensive. It is not an exhaustive list of all the work done by Public Works in 2021. But I will briefly highlight some of the key projects completed last year and share some of our accomplishments. Since the ordinance was passed in 2017, Public Works has completed 187 miles of general work, which includes the reconstruction, resurfacing, and rehabilitation of streets. <laughs> that number may sound a little abstract, so for reference, 187 miles will get you all the way to the north shore of Lake Superior, or just about halfway to Chicago. 65 miles of that work was completed in ACP 50 areas. ACP 50, defined here, as locations in Minneapolis where 50% or more of the residents are people of color and 40% or more of the residents have family incomes that are less than 185% of the federal poverty threshold. When it comes to our bike and pedestrian networks, since 2017, we've completed um, just over 25 miles of new protected bike lanes, just over 41 miles of pedestrian realm improvements, 2,856 ADA pedestrian ramp upgrades, and 780 curb extensions. Next, I want to highlight some of our accomplishments from last year, 2021. When it comes to our city streets, we completed over 150 intersection upgrades, traffic circles, curb extensions, and medians. We upgraded 50 signals and did over 44 miles of general work, so the distance of almost getting us to Red Wing, 22.4 of those miles, which were in ACP 50 areas. Now I want to share a closer look into some key projects from 2021. First is Hennepin Avenue Downtown Phase 2. It is a reconstruction from Washington to 12th, but Phase 2 is the northern portion of this project. The southern portion was completed in 2020. It includes sidewalk areas able to support pedestrian activities, space for planting and furnishing zones, one-way bikeways behind the curb, um, as you can see in the, the darker portion, the, the black pavement there in the picture, and space for enhanced transit stops compatible with future arterial bus rapid transit service. Next is Downtown East. This project consisted of the reconstruction of various streets located nearby the U.S. Bank Stadium and Washington Avenue, including portions of 10th Avenue South, 12th Avenue South, and 3rd Street South. The project included a six-inch tactile strip and other pedestrian realm improvements, a sidewalk-level bicycle facility, along with trees and native plants. This project is a great example of how we're exploring the addition of green space in really urban, dense areas. Next is the full reconstruction of 4th Street downtown between 2nd Avenue North and 4th Avenue South. This project consisted of an improved pedestrian realm with wider sidewalks, improved crosswalks, and curb extensions. It also included a two-way sidewalk-level bikeway on the north side of the street, new traffic signals, lighting, and crosswalk timers. The green infrastructure on this project consists of native plants and trees along the entire corridor, and it includes three bioretention areas, one of which is in front of City Hall that you may have even seen today. 42nd Street East was reconstructed from 46th Avenue South to West River Parkway. 
The redesign included a sidewalk level bikeway, new sidewalks and curb extensions in most intersections, and an updated streetscape with green infrastructure. Grand Avenue South. This project consists of the reconstruction of nearly two miles of Grand Avenue South, in total from 48th to Lake Street. In 2021, the southern portion was completed. This project consists of an improved pedestrian realm with curb extensions at intersections, traffic safety improvements such as chicanes, alternated parking, and pedestrian refuge islands. The revision of various tra transit stops were included as well as hardened center lines. Something to note on this project, 126 bioswales were installed along the corridor. Um, and this is over, so this can treat up to 55,000 cubic feet of water, and that's over half the volume of an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Plymouth Avenue North. This project was an entire right-of-way reconstruction between Xerxes Avenue North and Penn Avenue North. It provides important connections to Theodore Worth Park, has upgraded ADA ped ramps and boulevard space, a sidewalk-level bikeway facility, and pedestrian refuge islands and curb extensions at most intersections. Johnson Street Northeast. These images are photos of Johnson Street Northeast, constructed from 18th Avenue to Lowry Avenue Northeast. This project featured upgraded ADA ped ramps, pedestrian refuge islands, as well as new sidewalks and a sidewalk level bikeway. This bikeway allowed for improved bicycle connectivity with connections to 18th, which was constructed in 2017 and 2018, um, stretching from Monroe to Johnson Street. This project also added boulevard space that was almost entirely comprised of native plants, as opposed to sod. It included trees and pedestrian curb extensions as well. These photos show the 10th Avenue Bridge. This bridge was due for major updates, and we saw this as a great opportunity to make needed improvements and help build back better than before with two-way on-street curb-protected bike lanes and expanded pedestrian zones with north and southbound sidewalks. Franklin Avenue West was resurfaced from Hennepin Avenue South to Oliver Avenue. On-street bike lanes were added, and advisory bike lanes were included where parking was retained. The reconstruction of Weber Parkway and 44th Avenue North was led by the county, so this was a cooperative project. This project provided major connections to Victory Memorial Parkway, the Weber Natural Swimming Pool, and other important North Minneapolis parks and amenities. Bike facilities with various bike and trail connections were added as well as parking bays, green infrastructure, and ADA pedestrian ramp upgrades. Another cooperative project is the D-Line. Construction began in 2021 on the 18-mile D-Line that will replace Route 5 uh, with fast, frequent, all-day service, running primarily along Chicago Avenue south of Minneapolis and then up on Fremont and Emerson and north. The D-Line features updated and ADA infrastructure and improved transit stops along the corridor. Next, I want to move on to some of our pedestrian-focused accomplishments in 2021. These included over 11 miles of pedestrian realm improvements, including sidewalks and boulevards, 242 curb extensions, almost six miles of pedestrian lighting along the corridor, lighting corridor, 6.8 miles of safety conversions, and over 1,000 ADA pedestrian ramp upgrades. This slide shows the Vision Zero pedestrian improvement at 37th and Nicollet. So this photo is taken again, 37th and Nicollet, and this shows a bollard curb extension as well as signage that was installed um, in partnership with the University of Minnesota to study yield compliance on streets. This second photo is located at 21st and Lindale, so these safety improvements were made alongside the 4 to 3 implementation, um, and this image shows a bollard pedestrian median. And the Farview Sidewalk Gap project was located at Farview Park, on 4th Avenue North from 26th to 28th Street. This project added sidewalk within the park and added to an existing trail network. It provided sidewalks where there were previously none. No trees were removed during this project and ADA ramps, pedestrian ramps, were installed on all four intersections, um, all four corners, excuse me, of the intersections. As 2nd Street Northeast and 3rd Avenue Northeast, is a project that's part of our pedestrian safety program and featured um, vegetated medians. These medians were community-driven. 
Early engagement demonstrated a strong preference for sustainable landscaping over concrete, and this resulted in just under 2,000 square feet of vegetation and one tree. An interim condition, which you can see in the photo, showed a bollard median, or it's showing a bollard median, and the final project also upgraded ADA infrastructure and pedestrian ramps. Finally, in 2021, um, like I said earlier when reading off some of those statistics, over 1,000 ADA ramps were replaced and upgraded in every single ward of the city. This map gives an overview of some of those locations. Um, it is not complete, it is not exhaustive, um, but it does give a good picture of, of where we updated most of those ramps. And then this presentation will conclude with some of our bicycle-focused accomplishments in 2021. So almost nine miles of new bicycle facilities were installed, 7.6 miles of protected bike lanes, um, and 4.2 of those miles were in ACP 50 areas. This photo was taken on, um, oh, this is the Lind Lydier, excuse me, Whittier Lindale Bikeway. It runs over two miles, primarily along First Avenue South and Blaisdell Avenue South. The bikeway features a two-way bikeway with curb and baller protection, as well as crossing improvements for pedestrians. Um, and along the route, there are 12 medians vegetated with native plants and the addition of 65 trees. Thank you all for the opportunity to share some of our 2021 work and accomplishments with you. This concludes my presentation, um, and I'm happy to stand for any questions if there are any. Cool. Thank you, Ms. Fass. Uh, I, will, I will note that we have been joined by Council Member Wansley, and uh, we have a question or comment from Council Member Wansley. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Uh, just actually quickly, I think it was like three slides previous where uh, ACP, I, I just wanted to get a sense of what the ACP was. Yep. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, ACP 50 locations um, are defined as where 50% or more of the population are residents of color and 40% more of the residents have family incomes that are 185% uh, under the federal poverty threshold. Awesome. No, um, and thank you so much for this thorough presentation. Really Really um, great to see how our public work staff is really investing and in expanding, you know, not only bike passages across the city, but also ADA compliance. That's a big, uh, you know, concern that we get in our ward and really great to see that we're growing that work across the city and to have it be reflective in data in front of us today and for the uh, public to be able to see for themselves. So thank you so much for putting this together. Excellent. Thank you, Council Member. Any other comments or questions from committee members? I will just echo uh, the thanks for the presentation. I mean, this is, first off, great presentation, but it's reflective of a, a huge amount of work that is happening all across the board within public works, and uh, it's thoroughly impressive, and we're grateful to see all of these uh, improvements across our city. I know uh, Vice Chair Koski nudged me when you mentioned the bio swills, which are, I always love seeing those. So I have more than a hundred of those. That's amazing. Yes. But uh, it's, it's really great. All the different ways that we're improving the infrastructure in a really comprehensive way. So council member Wansley. One more question. I forgot. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Um, I know a couple of months ago we received a presentation from, I think our bike and pedestrian advisory committee. And um, I know one of the things that they raised was wanting to, you know, strengthen their, involvement in some of our policies as it relates to this. Can you talk to or speak to ways in which that committee was also involved in kind of uh, the work that you've led around expanding bike um, passages, the safety around it, also ADA compliance? Um, Chair Johnson, Council Member Wansley, thank you for the question. Um, it, yes, if I'm if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, yeah, the the pedestrian action committee, the bicycle action committee, as we um, can go through the CIP process, um, these are both committees um, that we bring um, the CIP to, uh, you know, throughout the duration of the cycle. Um, and so I think involving the BAC and the PAC, as well as getting feedback at various points, um, is is definitely critical. So I mean, I will say the, you know, the major improvements that, you know, I was able to outline in this presentation, um, you know, I think that they 
along with that feedback from the BAC and PSA, do help people feel more comfortable walking, biking, taking transit, um, you know, in, in sort of, um, yeah, I think in addition to the, you know, work that we shared here, um, we also have that complete streets policy, which guides how the streets are rebuilt and repaved. So we certainly have been taking the opportunity, be it through that avenue, be it through these committees, um, to, you know, every single time we have the opportunity to add pedestrian and bicycle and transit improvements, um, you know, in, even if we're just repaving the street, we take that opportunity. So along with the standalone programs that we have for just that infrastructure, um, we're definitely using the opportunity of our paving work as well to increase the mobility for people who are walking and biking, um, you know, whether that's, again, that bike or ped infrastructure as well as ADA improvements. Awesome. Um, I'm also going to let my constituents know, many of them know, I don't know how to ride a bike. So this is great <laughs> infrastructure that my myself, uh, yeah, can't use, but I'm lobbying for a tricycle committee because we matter so <laughs> I'm not talking, I'm doing tricycles. I'm bringing the tricycles back. I'm committed to it. We are out here alongside our, our, our bicycle folks. No, but thank you so much. <laughs> Good to know that those respective committees have been, you know, activated in this process and really thought of them as you presented pieces of this work too. Excellent. Thank you, council member. I'll take that as a staff direction around the tricycle committee. We might as well do unicycles while we're at it too. I've seen those around here. So uh, we, we really appreciate this uh, presentation, it's fantastic. So thank you so much. I'm not seeing any other comments or questions from my colleagues. So this is a receive and file uh, item. So without any objection, I'll direct the clerk to receive and file this report. And with that, we have no further business on our agenda. So I will declare this meeting adjourned. Thanks everyone, have a great rest of your week and weekend.